October 27, 1962 has been called the Black Saturday of the Cuban Missile Crisis. This is the day U.S. Navy ships forced a nuclear-armed Soviet submarine to the surface, and also the day an American U-2 was shot down over Cuba, killing its pilot, Major Rudolf Anderson. There was a third unplanned incident that same day that came close to triggering a nuclear war. Far to the north, in Alaska, Charles Chuck Maltzby, a dashing strategic air command pilot, was doing what he had done many times before. He flew from Eielson Air Force Base up to the North Pole, carrying special filters on his U-2 spy plane to pick up radioactive debris from Soviet nuclear tests. And as Maltzby flew north, two of his key navigational instruments, a drift sight and a radio compass, both failed. So he was forced to rely on a sextant for direction finding. Unfortunately, his sophisticated version of this ancient instrument was integrated into the broken drift site, and so it fogged up. And then the aurora borealis came out, so he had a hard time seeing where the stars were. And instead of turning due south to return to the base, he veered off course. Looking at his watch, he realized that the sun should be coming up, but it's not. When Malsby turned on his radio, he heard Russian folk music and Slavic voices. He had strayed over 400 miles into Soviet territory, and Soviet MiGs were coming after him. Maltzby radioed back to Alaska on an emergency channel saying, Mayday, Mayday. He was told, turn due east. He was running out of fuel up high, with Soviet fighters waiting below for him to descend so that they could shoot him down. Now, fortunately, the Soviet MiGs turned back as the U-2 totally running out of fuel, glided across the Bering Strait. But two things made the incident more dangerous, far more dangerous than it first appeared to be. One is that because U.S. forces were at a higher DEFCON alert status, the Air Force had mounted nuclear-armed air-to-air missiles, so-called Falcons, on its F-102A fighters at bases in Alaska. So when there was a rescue call, and these aircraft were launched and flying across the Bering Strait towards Soviet airspace to save Maltzby, they had nuclear weapons on board, and the pilots had the incentive to use them. because all they had to take down the Soviet jets coming after one of their own. The second danger created by the Alaskan U-2 incident was the risk of a disastrous Soviet misperception. When Khrushchev found out about the stray U-2 spy plane, he sent an angry letter over diplomatic cables to Kennedy, saying, is it not a fact that an intruding American plane could easily be mistaken for a nuclear bomber, which might push us to a fateful step? In the end, Maltzby made it home safely. No nuclear weapons were launched. And only years later did we find out how close we came to a nuclear catastrophe.